Rome and around Rome. <laughs> and like all roads lead to Rome. Like honestly, it just seems like everything was just built from Rome. So that's why it makes sense. Escape with dead men. We're just walking out of our hotel. It's pretty quiet. It's a really nice hotel. Oh, we're staying at the lift just there. And got these massive automatic doors. So you press a button. We're just going to the Trevi Fountain. We're going to go on the train or the tram there. We'll see how we go. I just walked from my hotel, uh, which was just down the street. And there's this massive park. It's really nice. Beautiful. It's got like a thing in the back there, see over there? I'll go show you. Into the unknown. Uh, so we're just going to the subway. It's underneath the park next to us. So we found it. Um, it's very safe around here. So as you can see, we made it to the Trevi Fountain. It's one of the most famous fountains in the world, for obvious reasons. According to legend, plusing one coin into the Trevi Fountain means you'll return to the Eternal City, which is right. Tossing two coins means you'll return and follow love. And tossing three coins means you'll return, find love, and marry. After tossing our coins into the Trevi Fountain, we made the short walk to the Pathion. Just at the Pantheon. Really cool. And it's free to go in, but they're just having mass right now, so we might not go in. So if you're not sure what the Pantheon is, it is a church, first and foremost. It is one of the best preserved monuments of ancient Rome. The structure was completed around 126-128 AD. Let's stumble upon this, and look, it's like the Sistine Chapel. <laughs> How cool! <laughs> that is so cool, guys. So there's a line behind me, and there is a mirror. There is a mirror just there. Yeah. So what you do is you come here, you stand at the mirror, you take your selfie, and then it looks like you're standing with the angels. All the churches in Rome are free access, so as long as you go on the right day, you can get in for free. Um, make sure you wear suitable clothing, they won't let you in if you have shorts or skirts on or anything like that. So make sure you put some pants on, jeans or whatever. Look at that. Just at the palace, it's a big courtyard. It's really nice. This came up a lot of steps, sorry if I'm breathing heavy. That was really nice, we're gonna go get some lunch. Uh, it's just down here, and the Colosseum is just down there as well, so we'll get some lunch and then go see the Colosseum. If you time it right, you might be able to catch the changing of the guards, which happens every Sunday. Um, everything that we saw today, as you can see, is within walking distance, so it's a very easy day to get around right. So we just found the birthday cake building, that's what they call it, the locals. I'll let you know the real name on the screen. And then just down here is the Colosseum. So when you find this, you'll find the Colosseum pretty easily. Big walk and the Roman Forum's right next to the Colosseum. Oh, beautiful, look at that, it's massive. We were lucky enough to stumble upon this parade for Rome's birthday. Look how lucky we are, we get to walk up here as well. <laughs> so cool. This massive building was built between 1885 to 1935 to honour the late great Victor Emmanuel II, which was the first king of the unified Italy in Rome. There is no entry fee, so it is free to get inside. If you want to go up this elevator, there will be a line at the back of the building and it costs 10 euro and you have amazing views of the city. We're just walking down the main strip. There's the big white building behind us. We just went up. Uh, so this is the main strip, it's right next to it. Colosseum is at the end, as you can see. 
and the Roman Forum is on the sides. It would be on the right side if you're coming from the birthday cake building. And yeah, it's really easy. Normally like some artists selling some paintings and stuff like that. Good atmosphere. They've actually blocked off this road today, so awesome. And here's some here's some of the Roman Forum. So Caesar had speeches there and everything like that. It's like their parliament, this is where they were. And actually, if you were in the Colosseum, lower down you were was better because you would get the blood on you, which meant you were really like close and rich. You have to have the Roma Pass to go into some of these things. Um, since it's so busy because of the parade and stuff, I think it's sold out. So we'll just see what we can do. We can get in. Uh, we can get into the Roma Forum. We're going to see if we can get into the Colosseum. Otherwise, we can look at it from the outside. I found this really interesting. I thought I would just include it in the vlog. Um, this is some street art that you just watch as they pretty much make this beautiful art in front of your eyes. Um, this is sped up, obviously. And then you can just buy it from them. It's really cool. They're really talented. There's all of these people around everywhere. Um, so make sure you do haggle and get a good price. But again, this is pretty priceless because you got it from Rome and you'll be able to bring it home and check it out. So we just signed up for a tour, uh, it's with an English speaker. So they have a lot of people coming around and saying it's like 35 euro to join up. The tickets are already sold, so they have group tickets and then you just join this. Tickets normally cost about 18 euro per person anyways for the Colosseum and the Rome Foreman. Uh, so this costs 35 euro with a guided tour. Otherwise you won't be able to get in and it leaves at 250 this one. And then they have a little radio headset and they'll explain it as well. So it's really worth it. It looks a little bit dodgy at first. I'm paying cash if you're not too sure. We paid by card, it's okay. I mean, this is how they do it here. So if people are coming up to you, it's not a scam. Sometimes, just be aware. Um, but yeah, so come over here. Here's our tour guide behind us. It's the lady in this jacket. So she's gonna do our tour with us. At least I will know where Caesar was and all those things. So really good. And the tour goes for about two hours. Can't go wrong. Also, just a famous friendly tip of mine. These are where you can fill up your water bottles and charge your phone. Don't buy from the street sellers. The, the headstock for open or closes the cover for the uh, You might notice that there's some holes in the stones. This is actually where some rare metals were. The Colosseum was actually stripped. So it doesn't have much precious metals or marble anymore. In the top of the it was the base. So the reason why they call them gladiators is because they used a sword called the gladiator. Pretty fun fact. So we're just at the Colosseum as you can see. But I have a little tour and the headpiece. We're at the Colosseum, we're learning about it, it's really cool. I know it's very hard to imagine what it looked like, but this next clip is actually the underground. So there'll be a floor on top of this, and the gladiators and so on would be underneath getting ready for the next flight performance. The color seems behind us, as you can see, and we're just walking to the Palatine Hill. So Palatine Hill is right next to the Colosseum. It also includes the Roman Forum. So definitely check it out, it's literally right next to it so you can't miss it. Um, you do need the ticket to get in here as well. So this is where our tour guide left us, but they get you access inside and then you're free to explore. So we're just on the top of Palatine Hill, looking at all the ruins and things like that. It's really like ancient awesomeness, I guess you could sum it up like that. A lot of the marble and all the like things that it used to look like aren't here, but you can still like imagine it could just be beautiful, you know? It is beautiful now, so I imagine like then. This is the Roman form behind us, it's like the parlor. As you come down from Palatine Hill, you see the Roman Forum. This is their sort of like parliament area. Um, a lot of stuff, a lot of drama happened over here. So it's really cool to imagine like all the, the slums, I guess, and people like stabbing people. <laughs> And they would just stab him in Parliament, like, if they just disagreed, like, they would just stab you. So it's pretty cool. Awesome. How was the Roman Forum? 
send you some clips. I'll probably do a voiceover of some of the things that you have to learn. Uh, we're heading back. It's about a 10 minute walk to our hotel from the Colosseum. So that's our day. We'll see you tomorrow. We're probably going to the Vatican tomorrow. Um, we're just going to explore and see what happens and come along for the escape. So we just got back and we're at the hotel. Just cooking up the remainder of the pasta and using the leftover meat from yesterday. That'll be our dinner. Trying to keep it a little bit cheap with the, the eating out, I guess. Um, we did eat out for lunch today. And yeah, so we're going to the Vatican tomorrow. Get there before nine o'clock because it gets really busy after nine o'clock. So the line will take about 20 minutes. It's free. Hopefully about 20 minutes. Between seven and nine, it should take about 20 minutes, they say online. Um, anything, anytime after that, it takes a few hours. So try to get there before nine. Um, unless this video goes viral, do the opposite because everyone will be going there before nine. So, uh, yeah, so that's our day tomorrow. We're going to go to the Vatican. We have to catch the subway, uh, which we did this morning. We nailed that. Make sure you have cash because they didn't have, uh, cardless on the ticket machine. So that sort of stuffed us up because we only had a $50, a $50 note and then we had to get it changed. So that took us a little bit longer, but it worked out well because we got to see the parade. And the parade was because of Rome's birthday. So there's 2,000. 775 years old. I think I got that right. Really old, either way. Um, so they're just doing their little parade down the Colosseum Road. Really nice. But I'll see you tomorrow on the escape. Please join us. Good morning, everyone. Uh, so we're just walking from our hotel, which is behind us. We're walking to the train, uh, the subway, and we're gonna catch it to the Vatican City. And there's a few other things that we're gonna see today. So come along for the escape. Here's the subway. So you just jump on a train on the ground and it takes you pretty much straight to everything. I saw this Jollibee sign, which was pretty cool because I didn't know they had Jollibee anywhere else. Um, Jollibee, if you're not aware of, is like a fast food chain in the Philippines. Um, and then we just made our way down to the Vatican St. Peter's. We had to join a massive line. We actually didn't understand why it was so big, but when we got in, we did realize that there was a mass on and a lot of people in the line were going to the mass. We made it to the Vatican. This is the Vatican City. We're gonna go in. It's free to go in. The line is massive, as you can see. We still got, we're about halfway there. We've been waiting about half an hour. Um, it's just before nine o'clock, so make sure you get here early if you wanna get in quick. And we're gonna go in there. So, awesome. Wow. wow. I can't take my mask off because we're going to wear masks inside. But we are inside St. Peter's Basilica. It's beautiful. There's marble everywhere. There's gold. Look at the roof. It's huge. I can't even like fathom the size of it, okay? It's just one room. It's so... If you're not religious, in a place like this, you feel a little bit like religious, you know? It's really like holy. <laughs> it's really like hard to comprehend and express how beautiful this place is. The footage just doesn't do it justice. Everywhere you looked, everywhere you turned, there's something new, something amazing to see. One of the most beautiful places I've ever seen. Highly recommend, it's free. What are you waiting for? Go to Rome. So I'm just in the corner, like to show you guys everything. So honestly, in the archways, there is these big, I don't know behind me, there's these big murals. It's like the Sistine Chapel in here, honestly. Um, Absolutely crazy, gold everywhere, massive pillars, marble on the floor, like, it's ridiculous. Um, they're gonna have a mass in the morning. It's gonna start at 10 a.m. They have five masses a day, um, changing at different times and stuff like that. But when you do get here, try to get here before nine o'clock, because the line was really big. You gotta, you gotta go through security and stuff like that. But honestly, this place makes you feel something, like, 
if, even if you aren't religious, you know, it's, it's something just to, to be in something like this, like this house of God, it's ridiculous. Um, but yeah, so it makes you feel shivers. I'm a little bit religious, but when I'm here, I definitely feel more spiritually connected. Um, but honestly, I can't film enough. It's so beautiful, so beautiful. One of the places that you must visit in Rome. It's free to get in as well. So make sure you have it on your list. It is free, but don't come, don't come on a Sunday because sometimes they have their masses and it won't be open. So honestly, everywhere you look, something beautiful. Beautiful is like not even the word to describe it. It's like stunning. Just everywhere. Like everywhere. So we just finished up inside the Vatican, St. Peter's. Um, we're just walking down this road in front of it now. We're gonna head to his fortress, which is just down the end. It's like a castle. Just in case anything happens, it's his fortress. So you can see why Pope uses this as his fortress. The Vatican is just down there, St. Peter's. And this is his castle that he goes to. If anything goes wrong, he's got his royal guard as well, his Pope's guard, and they'll take him here. It's literally a fortress. They can seal off the city as well. There's walls around the city. It's really, really cool. It's its own little thing. So we just got into the Castle St. Angelo. I'm terrible at saying the name, so I'll just put it up on the screen. Uh, it's 12 euro to get in. It's free if you're under 18, I think I saw. Um, so yeah, come on, have a look. It's just from St. Peter's, straight in front of it. You can't miss it. And we're just gonna explore around. It's a little like, little um, like medieval <laughs> castle. So it's got its little shops. You can literally see that they can close this off and no one can get in. 12 euro, it's not too bad. It's like $15. Australian, and yeah, we're gonna explore it. So we're just walking inside, up the fortress to the top. Very cool, very eerie. Be cool if like, they evacuated the Pope right now or we're inside with him. Get some juicy goss, lots of steps. So just be aware if you do come here, there's lots of these sort of steps. They're like half steps, they're not too bad, but they're lots. You can really see why the Pope would be evacuated here if anything was to go wrong. You have views of the whole city, you can actually see the birthday cake and the Colosseum. The views were really good, but I don't think it was worth the entrance fee. You can't go in too many rooms, you do get to see a little bit of art and stuff, but you don't get to explore the whole fortress. This car. So this is the subway. I'm just going to catch a uh, train back to our room, and that is our day today. So we went and saw the Vatican, uh, St. Peter's, and where the Pope goes in his little fortress. We are heading to Naples tomorrow, so we'll see you in Naples and enjoy the escape. I hope you enjoyed Rome as much as I did. It was absolutely amazing and must visit place. Please don't forget to like and subscribe and comment below. Thank you for joining on this holy escape. We'll see you on the next vlog.